In previous videos, we've talked a lot about, uh, we might say, what, what we study in psychology. So we study things like we study the mind and we study the, the brain and we uh, study behavior. And we ask questions like what, what makes people think what they think and what makes people do what they do. Uh, but there's a question that we, we haven't asked that's a really critical question, which isn't what do we study in psychology, uh, but how, how uh, we study it. How do we study these things? And so this has to do with what we uh, could call techniques, techniques uh, or methods, methods of psychological research. Or more commonly, if you're if you're taking a, if you're taking a class on this, you'll hear it just called uh, just called research research methods. And this is an entire field all to itself. Uh, you can get a degree in re in research methods for psychology. You can go on and make a career out of of just specializing in all of the different nuances and intricacies and complications that go into research methods. But underlying all of that complexity, there are certain core concepts that whatever type of study you're doing, you're going to see some of these, these same things coming up. Um, so the thing I wanna start with is something that you'll see in essentially every psychological study, and that's something called variables. So a variable, it's actually really nice in this case that the word itself tells us exactly what it means. So a variable is just anything that's able to vary. So we can put that it's um, something, something that can change or, or vary. So it could be something that varies over time or it could vary from one person to the next uh, so let's get some let's get some concrete examples of variables just so we have something to talk about just to pull things some things off the top of my head at random a height height would be a good example of a variable because you know you can have taller people or shorter people or you can see that height can vary over the course of a person's lifetime um, weight would be another example, or we could go with something, uh, something very different, like your, like your income, right? Income, the amount of money that you make can vary. Or if you're a health psychologist, you might be interested in uh, what we would call your cardiovascular risk, and that's a variable because you can have higher or lower. Uh, levels of risk. Yeah, this would be, you know, the, the chances that you have of having some kind of problem with your heart or your blood vessels. Uh, so for example, having a heart attack. And obviously you can have a higher level of risk or a lower, lower level of risk. And uh, these are all things that psychologists study in different contexts. Um, something that would more kind of be typically thought of as a psychological variable, we might have something like intelligence. Psychologists are very interested in why intelligence might vary from one person to the next, or what different kinds of intelligence uh, there might be. Or we similarly might be interested in why some people are more depressed than others. So depression is a variable. Um, another example of a psychological variable, stress, which has a lot of very interesting research uh, going on right now. But the point is that whatever area of psychology you're, you're looking at, whatever kind of study a researcher might be doing, they're in some way going to be looking at some kind of a variable. Um, and so the simplest kind of study that we could do concerning a variable would be to just investigate one variable by itself. So for example, I might, if I were a health psychologist, I might uh, just want to study cardiovascular risk. And so I might go to a city and say, in this particular area, um, what, what is the level of cardiovascular risk? How, how much are people at risk of, of having a heart attack? And that could give me some useful information. If I find that the risk level is very high, then maybe that tells me I need to, to do something to intervene and, and help those people. So we can do, and we do as psychologists conduct, studies where we just look at a single variable, um, but much more often, rather than just looking at one variable by itself, we don't, we, we really want to understand 
um, the relationships relationships between variables. Uh, so for example, instead of just looking at cardiovascular risk by itself, I could also go out and measure the level of stress, the level of stress that people are having in that area, and then see, is there a connection? Are the two related? As you know, if, if people have higher levels of stress, do they also have higher levels of cardiovascular risk? Or, or is there no particular relationship between the two? Um, Another example would be, well, like if I if I look at income, if I look at income by itself, that's not really that interesting. Some people make more money and some people like make less. And, and similar, similarly, I can look at uh, at something like height and also not very interesting. Right. Some people are taller and some people are shorter. We all know that. Uh, but if I then look for a relationship between the two, suddenly I have a very interesting study. I can ask questions like, do people who are taller uh, also tend to, on average, make more money. And that would be a really interesting thing to find out. So as we go on in future videos, we'll talk about all kinds of different things, interesting things that researchers have found out about variables and the relationships between those variables. At the same time, we'll also see that when you're, when you're trying to investigate this kind of stuff, uh, there are a lot of challenges that can come up. Uh, trying to see are two variables related, and if so, what is what's the kind of relationship? We'll see there's different types of relate ways in which variables can be related. For example, we'll see that sometimes um, there's a clear relationship between two variables, but we don't really know what's what's causing the relationship, and to then dig deeper and find out what is the root cause can be extremely difficult and sometimes even impossible. Um, so there are a lot of techniques and methods that we've come up with to try to get around those different challenges and problems. And uh, we definitely can add on a lot of detail and complexity in terms of how we go about researching these different things. But as we go forward and we talk about all, all that complexity and all those details about research methods, I hope that what you'll take away from this video is that underlying all that complexity, we're always still just talking about investigating variables and trying to see what are the relationships between those variables.